Hey there and welcome. I'm so glad you could join me today. This is Laura Lynn with Keep Inking Up. I'm an independent demonstrator for Stampin' Up! in San Antonio, Texas. And today we're going to make a really clean and simple um, card using the More Than Autumn uh, stamp set as well as the Greetings of the Season stamp set. I'm going to set these aside because I have everything mounted on my blocks already. So as most of you know, if you follow me, you know I'm going to be using a thick basic white card base. So this is four and a quarter by 11 scored and folded in half at five and a half. So I'm going to set that aside for now because we are going to work on our layer. This isn't a one layer card. It's like a two layer card. I'm just going to be doing a layer on top of my card base. So this again is a piece of our basic white cardstock. So this is four inches by five and a quarter inches because it will layer very nicely on top of my card base with just a little bit of a border. So hopefully you can see that. So I'm gonna be doing my stamping on this layer. So I have my stamps here. I'm gonna use various inks and various images. So I'm gonna begin with my Crumb Cake ink pad. So I'll open that up and I am going to start with my um, coffee cup from the More Than Autumn stamp set. Uh, both of these stamp sets come in bundles. For this card, we are going to, let me bring these back into you. Um, these uh, stamp sets do come in bundles. They have coordinating uh, dies. So for example, this More Than Autumn has all of these coordinating dies that go with it, cut out a lot of the images with a lot of extra um, uh, dies as well. But for this card, I am going to be using just the stamp set. So you don't need the bundle for this particular card. But if you stay to the end of the video, I am going to share a couple of more cards that use the bundle, use the, um, the dies in both of these bundles. This is the other stamp set, Greetings of the Season. I'm going to be using the Seasons Greetings image from this. There's lots of images, and I actually use this image on the inside of my cards. This, again, does come in a bundle. It is available in a bundle, and these are the dies that it comes with, which are tags, which is really why I wanted this bundle. I love tags. Um, I'm always behind on them for the Christmas holidays, but I love to have a bunch of, of tags available to make those this time of year. So anyway, like I said, this particular card we're gonna make today uses just the stamp sets and not the dies, but if you stay to the end of the video, you'll see where I use both dies both die sets from these two bundles. So let me put that aside again and get back to the stamping. So I have again my crumb cake ink and my coffee cup, and I'm gonna stamp it down toward the bottom right of the um, piece of cardstock here. That's perfect. And then I'm going to take the um, whipped cream and also ink that in the uh, crumb cake. So I just want a light color here and I'm going to line this up on the top of my coffee mug there and that's perfect. Um, I'm using my light color uh, crumb cakes. I'm going to be coloring this image in with our Stampin' Blends. Now keep in mind um, uh, Stampin' Blends are alcohol markers so you can use any of our ink colors. You know, a lot of times people say, well, you need to use the Memento Black tux Tuxedo Black ink pad. You can use any of our um, classic ink pads because they're water-based, so they won't run when you color over them with their Stampin' Blends because the Stampin' Blends are alcohol-based. These are water-based, so that those will work out perfectly. So I'm going to go ahead and put that ink aside for the moment. I don't need that one yet. Um, oh, here it is. Uh, I Previously, I made a mask out of... Um, sticky paper. Uh, this is a sticky note, but it's where the note is, the entire part is sticky. I've made a mask for my whipped cream, so I'm going to put that on top of my whipped cream because I want to add some cinnamon sticks to be coming out of the whipped cream. I don't want them to be on top of the whipped cream. And I'm going to ink those up using pecan pie ink. So I'm going to ink up this cute little cinnamon stick. Now this is a really small image, so you want to do a light touch. If you really smush down the ink, you'll get a really fat, distorted looking cinnamon stick. And we don't want that. We want a nice image. So I'm just going to lightly ink that down or stamp it down. And I'm going to put another one because I want two cinnamon sticks in my coming out of my whipped cream. Okay, so I'm done with that particular ink for now. So let's go ahead and take off that mask and so you can see hopefully that now my cinnamon sticks are popping out of the 
whipped cream and not on top of the whipped cream. So that looks great. Um, I do wanna add some chocolate sprinkles to my whipped cream, so I'm gonna use early espresso for that. So I'll open this up and I got my little sprinkles. So I'll ink them up and just put them on my whipped cream. Who doesn't like chocolate sprinkles on their whipped cream? I know I sure do. And the last thing I wanna do is I wanna add a sentiment that was from the greetings of the season. So this says season's greetings. I'm gonna do that in Poppy Parade ink. So I'm gonna open up that ink and I'll ink up my sentiment. And then I will, let's see if I can get this straight here. It's kind of hard with this camera in the way. Um, I think that looks fairly straight. And I'm gonna go ahead and close up my ink pad before I get my fingers in it. I have notorious, did I get any on me? Not yet. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and color my uh, image right here. So I have a couple of different blends markers. I have one of the light cherry cobbler blends. I have my light poppy parade and my dark poppy parade. And that's, I use, I'm using the poppy parade uh, as my main colors to color my cup, which is why I went with the poppy parade ink pad for my, my greeting. Again, if you follow me, you know that that's one of the things I like most about Stampin' Up! products is everything coordinates. So everything goes really nicely together. And again, you'll see how that's important um, on my cards that I'm gonna share at the end of the video. So let me go ahead and start coloring these uh, images. So I'm gonna use the bullet tip. I prefer to use the bullet tip. So I'm gonna open the bullet tip on each one of these. And now I'm going to oh, scoot up a little bit so I can see a little bit better. I'm going to add the um, light cherry cobbler along the edge of my cup. And maybe I'm gonna come a little bit over here. And I'm gonna come right along the bottom of the rim of the cup. And I'm gonna do that on both sides. I'm gonna come down on the bottom of the wrap, maybe a little heavier, and then I'm gonna come on the side. And I might add more later, but I'm just gonna begin with this on, there we go, on the outlines of those. Then I'm gonna take my dark, oops, I forgot, some parts up here. We can always go back and fix it and touch up. So this is my dark poppy parade. I'm gonna come right over and blend a little bit, get rid of that harsh line from the cherry cobbler and I'm gonna come in a little bit further into the cup. Just a little bit, not too far. And down here, I'm gonna come below the, just to get rid of that harsh line. And again, I'll probably come in and do some more touch-ups later. But I'm gonna come down and add some more on top of that cherry cobbler. Then I'll come in with the light and really try to blend all that in. But hopefully you can see how this is giving a little bit of dimension to the cup with the dark on the edges and the lighter in the middle. To get rid of the harsh lines, I'm kind of really pressing hard and doing circles to get rid of those harsh lines. But I think that looks pretty good. I do like the definition of the dark, so I might go in and just add a little bit of dark again. I like the contrast of that. So then I'll come back in with the dark poppy parade. Get rid of, oops, get rid of those harsh lines. I forgot to bring my color lifter, but we'll be okay. And then I'll go ahead and do again with the light, just to really soften all those edges. I like having a little bit of edges though, so I'm not gonna blend too harsh or too fully. I think that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the caps on these before they start drying out. Remember to hear that click so you know that they're closed completely. Then we're going to take the, let's see, 
the dark crumb cake and the light crumb cake for our wrap. And now this one, I'm gonna use actually the broad tip because I'm gonna use on the light crumb cake and I'm gonna use the bullet tip on the dark because I wanna cover this whole thing really quickly for the wrap. And it's just easier to do with the broad tip when you're covering a large area like this. Okay, and then I'm going to, to continue with the um, dimension, I'm gonna put the dark along the edge. I'm gonna come in a little bit on the bottom to try to make it look curved. And I might go all the way there. Maybe I'll do along the top here too. And then I'll go back to my light and try to get rid of that um, harsh line. You know what, maybe I need to do that. To get rid of that line, I'll come back to the bullet tip because I really want to press in to get rid of that harsh line. pretty good but I want to add a little bit of texture so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my bullet tip again and I'm just going to draw some lines to make it look like it's a corrugated wrap so I am just freehanding some lines in there so can you see that it's not perfect but it looks like you can tell that's like a, a wrap on a um, on a uh, on a cup so I'm going to put this cap back on and next I'm going to color my uh, cinnamon stick. So I have light copper clay. I stamped them in pecan pie, but I'm gonna ink them in, or color them in with the light copper clay. So I'm just going to, these are so tiny, I'm just gonna fill in with a little bit of the copper clay. I'm gonna let that dry for just a second. And then I'm gonna add just a little bit more on the edge just to try to give it a little bit of dimension. There we go. Isn't that cute? All right, so that's all of my coloring done. So um, I'm just now going to add this to my card base using some dimensionals. So I'm gonna put one on each corner. And I don't like saggy cards, so let me show you what I normally do. So I have one on each corner, and then I'm gonna put one in the middle of each side. And then one, two, three, four, I'll put one in the middle there. And these four, I'll put one in the middle there. That way my card is nicely supported. So when I place it on my card base, I won't have any sagging going along. So I'm gonna take off all the backings from these dimensionals. And this is the reason why I'm not doing a one layer card because you can see on the back side how the Stampin' Blends bleeds through the cardstock, and that's quite all right, but that's why I don't do it directly on the card base because you don't wanna open your card and see that on the inside of the card. So this is on a layer. So let me go ahead and center this on my card. So there we go, isn't that a sweet card? It's super easy, just a little bit of coloring with these fabulous images from the more than autumn stamp set but like I said I wanted to share how you can step these up a little bit so here's the same exact card you see I have the same um, uh, images um, the only thing I added was um, the embossing folder here on the background and then I did um, a fussy cut around the image so um, it would stand out on the back uh, stand out on the on the card here and I did add a strip of our Poppy Parade cardstock um, as a backing behind the cup and the and the um, greeting. So again, that's why I like to have the color coordination that Stampin' Up! offers. So the ink, the cardstock, and the blends all match, and so everything goes perfectly together. So that is one way you can step it up a little bit. If you wanted to go even further, you can, this is a different um, embossing folder. You can use any embossing folder that you have in the background. Um, and then here I went ahead and I cut the uh, sentiment using the um, dies that are, are in the greetings of the season bundle. So if you get the bundle, you can do the, you can use the um, uh, sentiments and the dies. Uh, uh, but I did use the same exact uh, coloring for the the coffee cup and all the images there. These these were all cut out though on both of these cards. 
um, they're the exact same images, except these were these, each image was individually die cut with the coordinating dies, if you get the bundle. Uh, and just, again, I, I put them exactly the same way that I did on the original card. And then I did add some um, retired uh, gems there for a little bit of sparkle and uh, did also add some ribbon that I, I believe this ribbon is also um, retired, but you could use anything that you have if you happen to have any uh, poppy parade or cherry cobbler uh, ribbon you could use that and you could use any gems uh, again it, they could be colors they could be um, any any pearls anything that you want to add on there for some extra bling so anyway I hope you found this uh, video helpful and that you can see how you can use a really simple card or you can step it up to make it a really fabulous uh, blingy card for your holiday cards your season greetings uh, Christmas cards thank you so much for watching me and I will see you in the next video bye bye